go ahead and read this this little chapter of Psalms 24 in the Bible. I just felt like going right into the other song. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The psalmist says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath found it it upon the seas and establish it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn, sworn to seek. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob, Satan. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up. Ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is King of glory. Selah. Heavenly Father, our souls lift you on high, Lord. From our hearts and to our lips, Lord, we praise your name. For you are God. Father, we have come to this place, Lord, to worship you, Lord. For you are the object, Lord, that we love and adore, Lord. Lord, we want to bathe you this morning with our love, our praises, our admiration towards you. For you are worthy. Father, what you have done in our lives, Lord, to wash us in your blood, to call us by your name, to bring us to this place that we may receive your spirit, to hear your truth, Lord God, and to someday walk back into glory with you. Father, it's all by your marvelous hand and his marvelous in our eyes. Father, we ask that you continue to bless this service, Lord, continue to pour out your spirit upon this congregation of your children. And wherever your people gather together, Lord, May your people, Lord, recognize your presence amongst them, Lord. Anoint our pastor in a special way this morning, Lord God. May, Lord, his soul just bubble up with the refreshments from the Lord, that he may present it to your children, that your children may receive it. Father, our brothers and sisters who have yet to make it in, grant traveling mercies to them, Lord. Anoint them where they are, Lord God, that they may come in, Lord, joyfully to rejoice in your truth. We love you and praise you. It's in Jesus Christ's name we ask these things. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Clap of praise. Hallelujah. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus. There's no one, there's no one like Him. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus. There's no one, there's no one, come on, let's sing this. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus. There's no one, there's no one like Him. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus. There's no one, there's no one. I searched around, searched around. I turned around, turned around.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There was an old song, amen, called Victory in Jesus that has been on my heart. And I'd like to try and sing that one this morning. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How He gave His life on Calvary To save us like me I heard about His promise Of His precious blood
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You may have your seats. Sister Tina, will you come this morning? Praise the Lord. expect to sing today even though I was on the list um, you know I really have a couple of songs in my heart um, <clears throat> and I just you know everybody's going through something and um, you know just hold on to the promises that God has given you um, doesn't matter how hard it may seem but God has given all of us a promise. And with those promises, it's up to us to hold on to them. Um, when you see people walk away, your family, your friends, um, you know, just know that God said it's you and your household. And you just hold on to that. And even when you feel like your faith is, is, is losing its grip on that promise, just reach your other hand up and grab hold of that promise even more. So i um, just going to sing this song, God is My Everything. Y'all got to help me sing it because they don't remember how to play it. <laughs> God is, God is my everything. God is, God is my everything, he's my joy, he's my hope, oh, he's my love, a shelter,
praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Sister Tina. He is our everything. He is all in all. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Brother Josue, will you make your way up here? Amen. Hallelujah. Ma, 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 ma. Amen to that. Um, <clears throat> God bless you, saints. Love the Lord. I love the Lord. Um, I, I have a brief testimony to give you guys, but actually my testimony is a little different. Because usually you have a testimony and you want to just say something that you wanted or something that God did for you. And, and like the whole, from the beginning to the end. I don't have the end, but to me, the in between has right. been bigger than I think probably when I get to the to that, you know. Um, and I yesterday I was during the day and something told me call brother Jack and tell him that you have a testimony. And I'm I didn't have like really because the devil's been trying to keep me quiet, and I've seen how a lot of you have been giving your testimonies, what God has been doing with jobs and, and things. And the other day we were at the boy in church and the sister just went up there and she just told how the, what she was desiring in her heart, God just gave her one, two, three, everything exactly how she, she wanted. So um, God put that in my heart, called Brother Jack. I said, Brother Jack, I have a testimony. And I really didn't, but I do, you know. So um, uh, basically there's a couple of scriptures that I kind of just – came across and have been holding on to and some of them are pretty familiar and one of them is seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness and all other things will be added on to that. Well that's, that, that falls in really really strong with me um, and many of you I don't know uh, some of you know and some of you don't but I, I no longer work at a restaurant as a pizza maker because my profession I'm a horseshoe very I shoe horses I put shoes on the horses and that's what I went to school for. That's what I did for 10 years, and life took me another way, and I was doing something else. Well, God gave me a promise that he said, you, that's what you do, that's what I made you to do, and you're going to do that. And he's been making a way. There's so many things that <clears throat> been happening that it's just been precise, like the timing, how one thing ends and another starts. But um, basically, it's been not easy it's been really really hard and a lot of times i see how things go a little a couple steps forward and then 10 steps back and that's just like in the natural because spiritually i've been standing so so strong and another thing is like the way i've been approaching it is i think that when god gives us a divine promise we need to uh concentrate more on him then actually what is it that he's going to give you? Because sometimes maybe the end result is just what he promised you, but he has some work to do with you through the process, and that builds us, and it, it just kind of just confirms the, just gives him, lets him know the confidence that he can have in us, you know? Um, and, 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 and you have to delight in that. This is the, uh, Psalm 37, it says, delight in the, the delight in the, in in the Lord, and He shall give you the desires of your heart. And it says, "Commit thyself unto the Lord, and and, and trust also trust in Him." So I've been holding on to some of those scriptures, and basically, um, there's there's been a way, many ways have been opening, and 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 and, and I've been kind of getting in there. I'm, I'm already, I've been, I spent so much money building what I need to be able to do that. Thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. I have a trailer that I built and I've been putting so much money on it and I don't, I don't really see none of that money coming back. And I've been just like really, really calm about it. Like sometimes it's been about almost two years and, and I don't see like the actual result, 
but I'm holding on to what God has told me. And basically, um, uh, I've just been praying, and, and I can sit right here and tell you guys and break everything down for hours, but I just want to make one point. is that through the, the journey that God gives you, always just be faithful to Him, and He'll give you the patience to withstand whatever it is. And I just asked God, and I said, I, God, I know that you're going to bring me through. I haven't even worried about it. I even, the person that I, that I actually work with, he, he's just always like, you're just so calm about it, you know? And we, he's been trying, and we've been trying to get into some places and stuff, and it just really doesn't happen. And I just keep telling him, you know what? It's, God, has a, uh, God is a perfect time. He he's, has perfect timing. And if it's not right now, then he'll, he'll open another door. And I've been kind of sticking with that. But I just, I was praying, and I just want to let you guys know that God will give you the desires of your heart. And sometimes, uh, uh, our, what we, uh, at least for me, sometimes what I ask God is so simple and so little. Even like when I was explaining to my coworker what I, what I asked for, he was looking at me like, really? And that, that fills you? But um, I, I say, God, I know that you're, what you promised me. I know where I'm going to be at. And I don't know when that's going to happen. But I just, I just want a little taste. Like, I just, let, let me just see what it's going to be like. And, and, and this is not, I truly believe, and I, I, in my heart, that it's not like I was doubting what he's going to do. Just, I just wanted to, say, Lord, let me, let me see a little bit, you know? So I just been kind of praying that in my heart. And he did just that. He did, like, some things open up, and some days that I've been getting up on my own, and people have been calling me, and, and customers have been coming along, and I've been having some days where I get up in the morning, and I don't have to go uh, 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 work with somebody or help somebody, that I've actually been making my own schedule, and waking up and going to my certain clientele and be able to make a choice and be like, you know, I have to go here, but you know what, I have to do this first. Like, kind of that freedom that's what God gave me. He yeah. said, you're gonna have your business, you're gonna have the kind of things that you want, and you're gonna be able to make up your own schedule, so that way you can, my, my, my thing is I like to be available for others. Yeah. I like to be able to help others, and the brothers have been calling me to, uh, uh, when they're in need and I have not been able to like actually be there and when I do I have to actually drop some of my n things my family and things to actually do and I've I actually been doing it but God gave me a little bit a little taste like that so basically like I just want to tell you guys that when you are trying to reach somewhere don't concentrate so much on what God is going to take you, what He's going to do for you, but enjoy the, the way. Because it says, delight in my ways. And if His ways are what He's making you go through, because the also the scripture says the footsteps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. So if He's ordering all those steps, delight in it. Enjoy the, 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 the journey that God has given you. And when you get there, then you rejoice about that. But you don't have to wait to get that thing to actually have some joy and to actually enjoy. You can enjoy the whole way there. And it's not, and like Brother Jack said yesterday, he was like, we're kings and priests. So the king, you never see when the king is going through something. The king is always standing up high, solid, and he might be going through so many things, but you always see the king. When he's going in, in that car, he's going through the thing, whatever he's going through, you don't see it because he's standing like that and he's just waving. So that's how we got to be. It, yeah, we're going to be feeling down, yeah, but just always keep your head up and enjoy and accept what God is doing for you, whether you like it or not. Amen. If you believe the scripture and the scripture says that the footsteps of the righteous are ordered by him, then he's ordering that. And you got to accept that. And that's all I want to say. And God bless you guys. Oh, I, you know what? I, I'm actually feeling so good right now. Can I sing? I'm not, I'm not singing. Can I sing a song? I'll sing a song. <laughs> God can do anything, 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 my God can do anything, yesterday and the day before, He is always 
praise the same, my God can do anything. Help me sing it. God can do
believe God can do anything. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. We don't have any written requests. No written praise report. But God is God and God is good. Amen. We're all alive and well and we're pressing on to the coming of the Lord and we're one day closer. One day closer. Some glorious day we're going to be in his presence well. Praise the Lord. Do we have any announcements, sister? Praise the Lord. Today, Sister Sarah's birthday. God bless you, Sister Sarah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And on Wednesday, it'll be Sister Verna's birthday. God bless you, Sister Verna. Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. We have communion and feet washing today at 530. Also, sisters and brothers prayer Tuesday at 730. And the church potluck dinner will be June 24th after service. Also, Ephesian Tabernacle, Beckway. Church Building Project CD with original songs, $20, EphesianTabernacle.com. That's where you can pick it up. Or that's where you can order it. Also, upcoming meetings, Brother Brown, St. Augustine Camp meetings this weekend, June 8th through the 10th. Also, Brother Smiley, June 15th through the 18th. And Brother Wesco's meetings, June 12th through the 15th, Saturday, the picnic. I mean, July 12th through the 15th. And uh, on Saturday be the picnic, July 14th from 10 to 2. You must register online. You can see Sister Tina or Sister Erica for the link. God bless you. We're going to ask the brothers to come at this time, and we'll take up this morning's tithing and offering. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Father, for all that you're doing in our midst. We want to commit these tithes and offerings before you, Lord. We ask that you would bless all that he gives with a willing heart. Uh, God, may you continue your anointing in our presence, Lord. May you anoint Brother Jack in a special way. And Father, may you dwell in each in our hearts that we can receive your words. In Jesus Christ's name that we pray. Amen. joy and the strength of my life removes all pain, misery and strife Thank you Jesus never to leave me never ever come short of his word I've got to fast and pray, stay in the narrow way And I'll never turn back God is God is God is We all know that God is My all in all
I know that seems like this could be the darkest days you've known, but believe you me, the God of strength will never let you go. Are holding you today You can rest inside It's gonna be okay And the voice that calm the raging sea Is calling you a shout So be still And know he's in control He will never Toils and snares You have already come His grace has brought You safe this far And His grace will lead you home And the arms that hold I'm holding you today You can rest inside It's gonna be okay And the voice that calm the raging sea Is calling you a shout So be still And know he's in control He will never the whole world, the whole world in His hand, you can hope, and you can rise, and you can stand, He's still got the whole world, the whole world in His hand, and the arms that hold the universe are both It's gonna be okay And the voice that calm the raging sea Is calling you a shout So be still and know he's in control We will never let you go glad to be serving a God that's so mindful of me. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you, Sister Cherie. Certainly do appreciate that. Appreciate the Lord. Would you stand to your feet? We're going to invite our pastor at this time. Let's sing this little song together. God has smiled on me. God has smiled He has set 
me free God has smiled on me He's been good to me Come on, let's sing it again God has
me. He's been good to 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 me. Oh, somebody worship him this morning. Somebody praise him. Why don't you turn around and beat somebody and say, God has been good to me. Amen. He's been good to me. Glory, glory, glory. Praise the Lord. Y'all can be seated. Um, just look at me. Praise the Lord. I have a little something here that I suppose it, uh, it has all my announcements lined up and I don't know. It's placed them somewhere. Amen. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. I, I, I heard, amen, the specials and certainly want to thank God uh, for them. Amen. Uh, Sister Tina and uh, Sister Sharice and Brother Solomon, as well as the testimony uh, from Brother uh, Josue. Just appreciate him, all that the Lord is doing. Amen. He's a good God. Amen. He's a, he's a real good God. Amen. Did I did I drop a note in the backpack there, brother um, Jimmy? If I if I, I, I will uh, try to remember. Amen. Off the top of my head, but a um, couple things that I need to just make mention of real quick. Um, this is first Sunday, so I I always try to give you all a quick update. Um, just to, since it's first Sunday, I want to give you all a quick update on our um, building fund project. And I had all my all my notes and numbers, and I done, I done misplaced it. So just hit that light switch for me real quick. Uh, just I know, um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, last last month there was a roughly um, a little over four thousand dollars that was received amen in our building fund i want to thank god for that uh we have our goal of 105,000 for this year we have pledges amen of 47,325 and year to date amen we have uh, received 13,413 dollars and 73 cents let's give god praise for that man and um the um, um, remember early in the year I talked to y'all about a transfer that we did of four hundred dollars to pay our expenses, Amen. And uh, so our net year to date is thirteen thousand uh, thirteen dollars and seventy three cent. I, I wanted to just uh, quickly mention. You can turn that light on for me. Thank you. Uh, quickly mention. Uh, don't forget our uh, what we pledge, Amen. If you haven't had a chance to fill out a, a pledge form and you want to, please fill that out and, and uh, turn it in. And, and you can just start joining us in on this journey. Also, uh, we talked about at that meeting about uh, offering, amen, and how um, I think 35 people given $33, amen, um, uh, a week would allow us to take care of our expenses. And we'll never see that uh, transfer happen again if we all do that, amen. And that's, that's what we're, we're aiming for. Um, as well as we were aiming for putting some of the money back that we took out last year. So uh, I, I want to encourage you to continue to do what you have been doing. And, and, and I want to say this because every church, no matter what church, no matter what size, amen, every church for some reason during the summertime, amen, the giving slacks off, amen. Things just, I mean, just go south in summer. 
but I, I'm believing God that it won't be that way here. Amen. And I just want to just ask that everybody continue to do what the, uh, what we have, uh, uh agreed to do. Uh, and I, I guarantee we'll be okay. Amen. We'll be just fine. So I uh, just wanted to make mention of that to you. And, um, and I got the, I got a, a number of things. Um, okay. Service. Uh, so as of, uh, tomorrow, Amen. I will be uh, leaving some of the saints. My wife will be uh, joining me. My uh, sister Cobb, uh, uh, sister um, Brown, and my mom. Amen. We'll all be going to uh, and Brother Jerry. Brother Jerry. Brother Jerry as well. We're all going to Israel. Amen. On tomorrow. We're looking forward to. Amen. The trip will be gone for two weeks. So we ask that you all, you all pray for us. And I wanted to just make mention that at, for next week, next week, uh, we won't have any service, midweek service, no Wednesday night service, no Friday night service. Uh, we actually want to encourage you, if you can, to go and be a part of Brother, um, Brother Brown's meetings there on next weekend. Uh, but we'll be back in church on next Sunday. Amen. Here uh, will be the next service, and we'll be having uh, Brother David Gatman. Amen. From uh, Alabama, he'll be coming to preach for us. So I uh, want everyone just to be, keep that service under prayer. And the following week, we will, you know, have our, our, our Wednesday night service. But Friday night, we'll be in Okeechobee because Brother Smiley will be having meetings there on the following week. Uh, that's when uh, Brother Smiley, and we'll be back on that Friday, amen, that uh, Brother, Me Brother Smiley's meeting starts. So just keep us in prayer uh, as we're away, amen. Um, yes, all right. The other thing I wanted to uh, mention real quick, I want to thank God. Last week we had a little, we are supposed to have Pinnacle Palms and um and it didn't go forth because we had some problems getting into the place. I want to thank everybody that showed up. Amen. To be a part of that. Thank you. I did get reach out to uh, the management team and they said that that won't, won't happen to us again. They sorry that that happened, but it won't happen to us again. So I want to thank uh, you all. We had we had a little surprise for you. I knew I wasn't going to be able to make it, but I had a little surprise for y'all. Amen. And 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 I just have to save the surprise for later. Amen. But, uh, but, uh, I was very grateful for all those that did show up. Amen. On last, uh, last week. Uh, last night, um, uh, certainly thank God for the service. Amen. There in, um, in, in Hollywood. And, you know, they, um, they were, we were, we were there. And I know there was a lot of conflicting events that was going on. And, uh, they asked, um, anybody here from Spirit of Truth Tabernacle and a few saints raise their hand. Didn't know it was a setup. <laughs> And they said, uh, anybody got a song from Spirit of Truth Tabernacle? And uh, so I'm looking around. I mean, I was I was in, in, in the office and I didn't know. I knew mom was there. But by, um, amen, by and by, when they said anybody got a song from Spirit of Truth Tabernacle, Sister Amanda jumped up and went up there and represented. God bless you, Sister Amanda. <laughs> we, we appreciate that. Man, she she lit the place up, <laughs> and uh, we just we just really appreciate her doing that. You know, she say they they said spirit of two time and I say, hey man, that's that's what I'm talking about. You know, but uh, but we're very very grateful. You know, for that and uh, just just a real special time. I about preached my voice completely out, so I don't have to take it easy on the day. Amen. But we had a we had a wonderful time there in the services, and and uh, just just looking forward to all that God has in store. Uh, we have uh, some rehearsals that's going to be coming up here for South Florida Choir. Uh, I put the uh, put something out there on Instagram and just letting the church know all the all of our young people. We love for you to be a part of it. Amen. Long as you live in a life. Amen. We want you to be a part of it. Don't get up there living in sin and trying to hide in the choir. Don't do that. Don't do that. Amen. Live right. Amen. Then you can sing for the Lord. So, uh, but we, uh, we have those rehearsals, amen, coming up and we'll keep that before you as well. So just keep that in mind. It'll be a couple rehearsals in, in June and I think one, uh, in, in July that we'll have as well. Uh, Brother Wesco is going to be doing a concert, uh, during those meetings. He's going to start on a Wednesday night and it'll be a Wednesday night concert. So when the meetings start, we'll also be a part of, uh, most of the services there. Amen. And uh, so just keep those things in mind. Uh, certainly want to thank the Lord uh, for uh, the Thunderbirds being back. Amen. Uh, good to have them back. I thank God for them. Amen. Also know that the the, uh, the the kings were away as well. So we thank God for them being back safely as well. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. And uh, so, like I said, just please keep us in prayer as we uh, prepare to leave on tomorrow. Amen. And uh, we're, we're under tremendous expectation, just a little bit more inspiration. Um, you know, the Lord is blessed. I think it's going to be about 38 of us that's going over. Amen. To uh, Israel and and. Uh, we're just we're just expecting God just to minister to all of our hearts. We need it. We need it. So uh, uh, just uh, pray. You know that uh, oftentimes what you hear in the media, Amen, is not really what's happening. Uh, so don't be too moved by that. But um, you know, anytime you're going to Israel, Israel is a land that it will always be people always coming against it. You know, people just don't like the Israelites. Right, and it's always been that way. The Philistines could not stop coming against them, but every time they come against them, what did God do? Defeat them Philistines, right? So we got different Philistines today, right? But God still takes care of that land. There's too much prophecy that must be fulfilled in that land for anything to happen. You understand? Amen. So you, some are safer in Israel than we are right here. Amen. Glory to God. But uh, but God is good, Amen. And so we just we, again we just solicit your prayers, Amen, for us as we as we travel. Uh, I know uh, there is one other announcement that I need to make, but I'd rather make that at the end of the service. Uh, and um, and there's something else I think I had, but I don't I don't I don't know it. That's why I write things down. <laughs> That's why I write them down. But I, I have no idea what happened. But God is good. Uh, they already announced that, right? Ah, okay. Yeah, I, I, I didn't want to, you know. I, I, yeah. Yeah, I ain't, yeah, okay. They said my, uh, it is my daughter's birthday, and, and I'm very happy. Amen. God has given another year. But you understand, Sister Michelle, I just, you know, I know that y'all already announced it, so I wasn't going to, you know, I was just going to go with protocol, right? Amen. See, this is why God gave you a wife. You see that? She knew exactly what to go look for. Right? Thank you. And you know everything I had on here I announced. Boy, God is good. One thing. One thing I miss. One thing. This is big. Uh, so, um, thank God for the Acquire the Fire, Amen, uh, tent meetings. We, we, I, I, I'm still, still blessed by that. And, uh, we, um, uh, I'm sorry, light the fire, light the fire. But, um, but, um, we are, um, it was in my heart as we were just praying, praying about this. Uh, the brothers, we were all in, in the room praying, Amen, and, and, uh, you know, about, I told them what was my desire, and Brother Stephen said, Brother, we need a date. Just give us a date. I said, okay, all right. You can put me on the spot. So we put a date down, and everybody started working towards it, and, and it was very successful. Uh, and, uh, you know, after that, we felt to try to just continue our efforts there in Okeechobee. Rather than moving the tent around all over the place, let's try to continue what we've done there. So we want to try to, uh, in my heart, I was like, Lord, if we can get the tent up three times this year, that would be a blessing. And uh, so we were looking at another date here in the near future. And uh, as I was been talking about it with different people, an idea came up, amen, to do a back-to-school outreach, all right, where we would provide, um, you know, backpacks and school supplies and things like that to so many kids in that area. Uh, but we would not only just do the back-to-school outreach, but we'll put maybe the tent around the outreach, right? So we'll invite them to service again and invite them for some hot dogs and invite them for some school supplies. And we're just going to do all we can to try to outreach, right? So uh, the date that we're looking at is August 11th, I think 10th and 11th, somewhere around there. And uh, I just wanted to kind of get that out before everybody. We're we'll be working towards that as we get back. And uh, while we were there at the tent, Brother Steeman also mentioned about bringing the tent over to Sarasota. So uh, uh, what's in my heart is possibly doing that in November in Sarasota, doing that in November. So we'll try. If we don't get the tent up, amen, uh, in, in August, we'll still have some services out there in Okeechobee. But it would be nice if we were able to do the tent. And, and um, you know, the, the gentleman that came and helped with the Bibles, he was so blown away by Sister Tanya's testimony. 
that he said it's got to be told everywhere it's got to be told everywhere. we got to take the tent everywhere i said well brother i can't do all that you know but he told me he called me up and he said uh he said I, I, i'd be willing to help fund it and i said oh, yeah oh yeah so I say, well, praise the Lord, you know, and uh, so with, with him having a desire to want to do that, then we're going to try to do all we can to keep things moving in that direction. So the next the next date that we're looking at doing something is August 10th and 11th. So keep that in mind. I believe that's uh, it's either August 10th and 11th or August 11th and 12th, something like that, right? 10th and 11th. Okay. Friday and Saturday. So uh, keep that in mind. We'll give you more details as we uh, approach that. Amen. So praise the Lord. God bless you. I think that's all that I need to mention. Musicians, thank y'all so much. Appreciate you all. Uh, God richly bless you. We got the best musicians in the message. We got the best song leader in the message. We got the best church in the message. Praise the Lord. Amen. I, 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 I thank God and I believe God. I, I just I just got to announce it. Just in case y'all do not know, the devil is still a liar. Well, the devil is still a liar. How you know when he lied? Every time he opened his mouth, he lied. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. He's still a liar. We got victory, church. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Quitting is not an option. Is that what y'all heard last Sunday? That quitting is not an option. Glory to God. <laughs> Giving up, that's not in the cards. No, 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 no. Can't do that. He done been too good to me. Brought me too far. For me to turn back now. Amen, amen, amen. The Bible said, but having done all to stand, quit, give up, turn back, run. Glory to God. Stand. And that's what we're going to do is stand. Attack this one and attack that one. I'm still standing. I'll be at prayer on Sunday morning. Pray to God. Pull down the strongholds. Glory to God, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. We're standing together. Amen. 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 My God. Sometimes you just you just want to you, you want to go and attack, right? You see the devil. You ain't gotta always be taking blows. Sometimes give the devil a blow. Swing back. You never know. You might give him a knockout punch. And all you do, amen, is one stone to defeat a giant. Amen. You don't need a sword. You need one stone. And what if that one stone is one revelation? You give the devil one revelation and knock him out. Praise God, church. Amen. All right. Ain't, that's not my sermon today, but... <laughs> I just thank the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. All right. Y'all stand with me. I want to read a, a scripture uh, here uh, on this morning. And, and my uh, thoughts are kind of jumbled. At least that's the way I feel. But I know sometimes God allows you to get into a state like this so he can speak. Amen. I was, I think, um, Brother Homer Brown uh, told um, Brother Danny Steeman, turn with me to Psalm 63. Uh, he told Brother Danny Steeman, uh, he says, uh, when you get up there and you preach and you actually feel like, uh, man, I really did a good job with that sermon. He say, then God didn't speak. He says, uh, but when you get up there and feel like, I don't know what I did. I done messed all this up. So that's when God spoke. <laughs> so uh, we want God to speak today. Amen. Uh, Psalm 63, uh, I want to just read here. And I did, like I said, don't, don't, don't let me forget. I do have something else I need to announce to you. But after, uh, amen, after the sermon, amen, we'll, we'll do that. Hopefully I won't forget. 
Uh, but uh, Psalm 63, let's, let's read this. Amen. It says, Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To see thy power and thy glory. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. Uh, when I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches, because thou hast been my help, Therefore, in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me. But those that seek my soul to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for foxes. But the king, amen. Last night we found out that we're kings. Amen. But the king shall rejoice in God, and every one that sweareth by him shall glory. But the mouth of them that speak lies shall be stopped. Amen. The Lord had a blessing to the reading of his word. Let's just bow in a word of prayer. Dear God, um, we are trusting that you would take control over uh, our thought today. May the Holy Spirit, God, speak to every heart, to every need, to every person. Get glory and honor out of uh, our gathering here today. Uh, we trust that the Spirit of God would be pleased with all things. Thank you for everything that has happened thus far in this service. And, uh, God, we, um, we, just, we just want you, amen, to, to have your way even now. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Man. So David uh, writes these words here in Psalm 63, and he, and he talked about, in verse 5, says, my, show, my soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness. Amen. And, um, and as far as his soul being satisfied, it was um, first thirsty, amen, and longing uh, for God. Amen. He says, uh, my soul thirsteth for thee, my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. And, and, and David comes, you know, later on and he tells us that his soul was satisfied, right, after, after finding God. And, uh, and I just wanted to take for our topic to date, uh, satisfaction guaranteed. Amen. Satisfaction guaranteed and, and 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 just to make it clear there is no satisfaction uh, outside of Jesus Christ amen uh, you 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 will never be satisfied you'll you'll never have enough amen until you can come in and in, into a relationship personal relationship with him uh and and you know as I you know there's there's many thoughts that kind of go through my head as we as we approach this and uh, and I'll just you know how to, we'll just go how the Lord leads us. But uh, there was a man. Jesus had a, a a time in his ministry where he went to Samaria, and the Bible tells us that he had need to go by Samaria. And 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 the way that he was going, uh, the the true destination where he was trying to go, this was not a shortcut. This was actually taking him out the way, amen, to get to where. He was going, Amen, and 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 actually, when it, it it added more miles, uh, if I could put it that way, it added uh, more, um, uh, if I could use these words, it added a little bit more stress to the situation. Uh, oftentimes, when we look at that out of John four, Amen, there are there are things, Amen, that. Um, uh, that occur in in our life that you know sometimes uh, God might have to go a particular direction in order to get your attention, 
Amen. Sometimes he might have the ministry going a particular direction just to get your attention. We could we could have a particular destination. This is what we're trying to get to. But we're going to have, have to stop and have need to go by a particular way in order to pick this person up along the road. Amen. I hope you're with me. And, 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 and I want you to notice that when Jesus said he had need and told the disciples he had need to go by uh, Samaria, in Jesus' mind, he knew in Samaria there'd be one woman. Amen. That he would have a conversation with at the, um, you know, at the, uh, uh, at the well. And, you know, he began to, you know, just kind of talk with her. And, and, and we'll, we'll read a, a little bit of this. Amen. Out of John 4. He began to talk with her and, 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 um, you know, just kind of breaking some things down and just kind of filling her spirit and, and, and all of that. And, and as he, uh, began to talk with her, uh, there was a statement that he made. That I want to just read to you here out of John uh, four verse uh, verse um, uh, uh, twelve is that no, no, no thirteen thirteen because he asked the lady for a drink of water when he got there and you know and 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 she was uh you know she just began to talk about water water representing life and things of that nature she began to talk about it and and he began to kind of tell her some things about you know if 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 um you know if you knew the gift of God and who you were talking to he said you would ask me for water. Right? You would ask me for water. She's like, he, she like now, now, um, you ain't even got nothing to draw with. How you, how you gonna get water out the well? So he, he answers the question here in, in a way, amen, that I want us to just kind of see here. Uh, verse 13 says, Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. And, and when we, when we, when I, I want us to look at that statement, this water, my God, because water represents life. Amen. Water represents life. In order for you to live, you're going to need some water. Right? You're going to need some water. But also, I want to understand that. I want us to kind of catch this from a different angle today. You know, uh, and, and some people, their water is their career. Right? And, and, and some people, their water is their profession. Amen. And some people, their water is their family. Their life is bound up in those things. Amen. And, 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 and I want I want you to realize that if your life is bound up in natural things, you will never find satisfaction in that. Amen. You're only going to find satisfaction in Christ. Amen. Glory to God. Right. So he, he goes on to make another statement here. Amen. And verse 14 says, But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. So again, he, he, only Christ can satisfy the true thirst. Now I want us to go a little further here, amen, in this, uh, in this thought. Glory to God. And I, I was looking at this woman, right? Why, why would Jesus have need to go by Samaria and talk to this woman? Why, why would he do that? You know, because, uh, and it just kind of hit me saying the reason that he would talk with this one woman, and sometimes the reason why God would change, amen, the, the, the service to get the one person, because this one woman had the ability to turn a whole city upside down. Her testimony could change many people. My God, my God. And, and you want to know why God came after you? Because your testimony can turn a whole city upside down. That's why he came after you. Right? That's why, that's why he had need to get a word directly to you. And in this season, amen, he has, he has need to get his word to certain people, uh, just to kind of get them on the right track. And I want I want us to just kind of catch this here today. I want to read a little quote out of God's provided approach to divine, to divine fellowship. Glory to God. Just bear with me today. Amen. Amen. He had purpose. He had need for going in that direction. Glory to God. We're trying to find satisfaction in a lot of things. You know, amen. Some find it in careers. Some find their satisfaction in, uh, in their professions. Some find their satisfaction in their families. Some, uh, find it in, in relationships. That, but, but I'm gonna tell you, none of those things provide true satisfaction. Your satisfaction can only be found in Christ. Amen. Look at this. There's a little statement that's being made here. A little testimony the prophet's given. Says today on the plane, it's coming from Louisville down here, taking me two and a half hours of flying and take me all day to make it. Delayed planes. 
and maybe God had a hand in it. Now, now you know, we, we see stuff go on in our life. We think the devil, the devil, the devil. No, maybe God had a hand in it. Amen. It ain't always the devil's fault. God, God, God orchestrating things, putting you in a place to talk to somebody. Amen. So rather than get frustrated and, 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 and flustered and all that, why don't you start praying? God, why you delayed me? Why do I have this flat tire, Lord? You know, who is it that you want me to talk to, God? Amen. Amen. Right? This is the way we should approach things. He says, it said, taking me two and a half hours of flying and taking me all day to make it delayed planes. And maybe God had a hand in. When I got on at Louisville, there was a young lady got on the plane. Sat down by me. She said, do you mind if I sit here? I said, not at all. And as we went on, they were serving uh, lunch on the plane. And I prayed. And she said, are you a minister? I said, yes, ma'am, I am. And she said, I'm a believer too. And she told me of her certain denomination. I said, that's nice. And I noticed we had a little package of cigarettes on the plane. And I watched to see what she would do about it. So as soon as the dinner was over, she began undoing that package of cigarettes. And she fumbled one a little bit. And she stuck it towards her mouth. And she took it down again. And after a while, she lit it up. She said, you don't mind if I smoke. I said, you don't mind if I tell you I do. I said, I do because she said, why? I said, I can't understand why a nice little lady with a personality that you got would have to do a thing like that. She said, oh, I get satisfaction out of it. And I said, that's only substitutionary satisfaction. If you would just take what I tell you and would turn your life completely to God, amen, then, there, I mean, there's something that you're missing and you're trying to make cigarettes fill up that longing that's in your heart. Give you a false satisfaction. Oh my, see, so what, in, this, in her case, it's a cigarette giving her false sat satisfaction. And some people, it's their career. False satisfaction. Right? Their profession. False satisfaction. Their family. False satisfaction. You can only find satisfaction when you surrender completely to God. Listen. Say, so give you a false satisfaction with, I mean, which will soon give you a cancer or degrade your body and you'll be gone. And I said, God made a person the thirst, the thirst after him. And then if they do, do not accept that, then the devil gives them a false conception of pleasure. And they try to satisfy it with the things of the world. She made about two little draws of the cigarette. And she said, I'm 22 years old. She said, my engaged boyfriend is 32. She uh, said, he told me, I've been overseas for three months. He begged me to smoke no more. And she said, this is the first time I have smoked missing the plane. And she said, sir, I take this promise now. And she put the cigarette, cigarette out. And, um, and that was it to it. Right, so all, all the delays that Brother Brandon went through, it was so he can get in touch with this one little girl. See, he had need to go through the delays, just like Jesus had need to go by Samaria. He had need to go through this to get this one little girl to bring conviction to her so she could stop smoking. She was trying to find satisfaction in the cigarette. Now, you know what? Uh, she's not the only one to do that. There's many of people today that try to find satisfaction in everything else except Christ. And I'm here to tell you, you will never find it. I don't care how long you go in life, you will realize one day you could not find satisfaction outside of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Temporary happiness. Right? Smoking cigarettes will produce a temporary satisfaction to calm one's nerves. Right? And as the prophet say, eventually you keep smoking cigarettes, it's going to create cancer and you're going to end up dying an ugly death. Right? Uh, coffee can be an addictive as well. Just like cigarettes and, and coffee can produce a temporary satisfaction. Right? Uh, well, a lot of people find satisfaction in going from party to party to party. Let me tell you something. You can't party forever. Alright? At some point the party comes to an end. Amen. Your good feelings will come to an end. Amen. Your high or your hangover will wear off. Amen. And to feed it, you must seek another party, another high, or another drink, because that is temporary satisfaction. Amen. And, and I want to also just kind of hit this today. Money does not provide complete satisfaction. Money won't do it. 
Amen. Because, you know, that's why we chase careers. That's why we chase some of these things. Money is not going to give you complete satisfaction. And if you don't believe me, let's ask the rich young ruler. Right? Money will not provide the answer. Only Jesus Christ can do that. If you drink of this water, you'll never face thirst again. It's the water that Jesus provides. Jesus Christ alone provides satisfaction guaranteed. Let me uh, go on to a, a, a quote out of this message, Life. Amen. The prophet tells us this. He says, Now, but God in his great economy for mankind has made man in the way that he wanted man to be. Now, he made man to thirst. Did you notice David said here, My soul thirsteth for thee. Oh, I love that. As in a dry land where there's no water. Just imagine, said, my soul is so thirsty. God, I'm thirsting for you just like I was in a land where there was no water. He must find water or perish. My soul is thirsting for thee. Amen. And, and I'm going to tell you, if, and, uh, um, I think we all, that's when we'll get something from God, when we get to the point where our soul is actually longing for him. Put that down, pull that down for just a second. You know, David writes in another um, another passage, I believe it's uh, uh, Psalm 42, he talks about how the deer, a man thirsteth or longeth for the water brooks. Right? He longeth for it. Now, now, the reason that the deer is longing for water is the deer is actually being hunted. And as he's being hunted, a man, he gets struck, maybe in his hind quarters and 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 and, and uh, maybe they get they turn a, a dog loose on him, and that dog s s uh, slaps him and strikes him, and and now he's bleeding. And that deer realizes he has an instinct, he has something on the inside that tells him that if I do not get to water, then I'm gonna die, right here. So that deer begins to long. Amen for water. And, and what, what you'll see the deer will stick up his nose and start sniffing. And when he sniffs, he's trying to find where's the closest brook. And if he gets to the water brook, that dog can forget about it. Hallelujah. And what we're trying to do is get people to the water of life. Amen. Sustaining life. Get them to the brook where they drink there. The devil will not be able to do anything against them. See, you know, when we leave here, the devil going to be striking at us. He going to be doing this. He going to be doing that. The devil got all kind of tricks up his up his sleeve. And and let me tell you something. Um, you cannot outsmart the devil. You can't do it. I don't care how long you've been around, how long you've been in the message. You can't outsmart the devil. He got something for you. Amen. So, you know, here the thing of it is, we're trying to get people get to the water to drink. Only Christ can provide that for you. Only Christ can give you that type of satisfaction. Let's go on a little further here in this quote. He says, uh, he says, God, uh, my soul is thirsting for you. Now, say, now God made a man with a thirst. That's a part of a human being is his thirst. But God made him a man. The thirst is a man of thirst for, to thirst for God. And the devil has perverted it and make it thirst for his kingdom, for the world. Do you get it? The thirst in man is godly, for God made the man the thirst, thirst for God. And how dare some of you will be so little uh, as to try to quench that blessed thing of thirst by trying to satisfy that with drinking and smoking and television and running and carrying on and reveling around trying to satisfy that godly thing that God put in you to thirst for him. You are polluting the fountain that God has placed in you to receive his spirit. And you're drowning it with the things of the world and they do not satisfy. They never will satisfy. And so that's the reason you put a pistol to your brains to blow them out is because that things go the way they do and the world's on a great suicide, on a perversion and homosexual and the crime that's in the land the way it is because you're perverting the very thing that God gave you and trying to satisfy it with the evil of the world. Take that blessed Holy Spirit of God. Place the thirst in your soul to call for, call for and you satisfy it with a nightclub somewhere. No wonder you got a headache the next morning. Then you take a case of beer and you go to your house and sit down and drink it, trying to satisfy that God and thirst that God put in you in your soul to thirst after Him and take the devil's heart and try to satisfy the thirst that God put in you, is, uh, in you to thirst after Him. How can you receive anything but eternal separation from the presence of Almighty God when He made you to thirst after Him? David surrendered himself and said, My soul is thirsting like I was in a dry land. Where there's no, where there's no water, I thirst for thee, O God. There you are, David said, I sing thee in thy sanctuary, and my soul thirsts for that, for that power. 
Well, there you are. That's the difference. And he goes on to make this other statement. That's what makes things different is the thirst that God give you. If you satisfy it with, with, with the water, come unto me, all ye that's thirsty. Come and drink from the fountains of life, freely without money, without price. There's a fountain open in the house of God in the city of David. There's the fountain that you're thirsting for. Certainly it is. Don't try to pervert it. By trying to say, I'll satisfy by drinking, I'll satisfy by having a date with this girl, I'll slip out a little on my husband, and I'll go out a little on my wife, you're only heaping judgment. You say, I'm not satisfied, Brother Branham, no wonder. It's God dealing with you, God trying to bring you to something, and you take the devil's suggestion and go off with it, and that's the way sorrow comes. That's how death comes, That and, and, that, and that life is not life. Amen. Oh, I like that statement. That life is not life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Amen to them that will receive it. Now, you know, when we, when we look at this, uh, I, I'm reminded of just a statement that the prophet made. When, we, when we're going through life, and I want to I say this, amen, to uh, just everybody. Church, I, you know, we, we, we're, we're coming through a season. We're seeing the blessings of God just flow. Amen. Uh, the different ones, the blessing of God just, just moving. And, and see, I mean, when you start hearing testimonies of how God is blessing them, it ignites your faith. <laughs> and you're like, oh, if God can do that for so-and-so, then God's going to do something for me. Right. Amen. And, 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 and I think that's, it's, it's quite all right to do that. But uh, I want to warn the church. I want to warn the church. Um, three things that, that actually get a minister off track. Yeah. And not just a minister. But church people, it's three things that's going to get you off track. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Your, your, your satisfaction has got to be found in Christ. Can I say it this way? Don't be compromising with the devil as God blesses you. I'm going to say that again. Don't start compromising with the devil as God blesses you. Amen. Amen. Right? When God blessed me, I try to give him more. Yes. Not less. Right. And when I was, oh, that's a blessing. God, I want to give you this. Yes. More time, more effort, more in. I want to give God more. Yes. Don't compromise. Uh -huh. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. We need some Chick-fil-A's. Yes. Yes. We need some Chick-fil-A's in the house. Oh, you know, Chick-fil-A will not compromise on a Sunday. No matter, I mean, they can, they can, they can, they can produce stats to show how much money you can make on Sunday. Chick Fil A say the door gonna be closed. Walking through the Atlanta airport, all the restaurants open, and you look at everything dark at Chick Fil A. If you work for Chick Fil A, you don't work on Sunday. And God has blessed them for their stand. My God, I mean, even even the, 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 the owner or the guy that started, he's, he's passed away, but they still hold him to that standard. Yes. Thank God for it, church. We need, we, need, we need people. When God bless you and your business, be like Chick-fil-A. Oh, I'm going to say it. See, the satisfaction is not in the money. The satisfaction is not in the achievement. The satisfaction is in Christ. And if you can't keep that balance, the devil going to throw, throw you for a loop. All right, Amen. Hallelujah. See, I mean, this this is this is in every area. If you don't keep a balance, even in your family, satisfaction is. I mean, I love my daughters. I love them. I show sure them do, but they're not my satisfaction. My satisfaction is in Christ. I love my wife. Show sure enough do, but she's not my satisfaction. My satisfaction is in Christ. Oh, can I? I'm, I'm 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 saying some things. All right. I mean, you know, if 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 if, if you know, your satisfaction got to be so locked in Christ that if your family decide to do something different, that it don't affect you. I'm still going to do what I'm doing because my satisfaction is in Christ. Now, y'all can come with me or not, but I ain't changing. See, it's, it's a personal relationship. It, it, it's, 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 it's what God has done for me. I know where I came from. I know where God brought me from. So ain't no sense in trying to do anything else with me. 
I'm just, I, you know, they, they had a son they used to say, I'm locked up, tied up, tangled up in this. Praise the Lord. And, and, and since I'm locked up, tied up, tangled up, don't try to take my knots out. I like it this way. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Women, money, popularity. That's what get a minister. Now, 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 so if we just, when they say a minister, uh, it would be women, money, and popularity. Now, when we take it as, as a whole for the church, it's not just women, right? It's relationships. Right. You know, the devil can use a man for a sister, the devil use a man against you. Right? For a man, he'll use a woman against a man. But for a, a woman, he'll use a man against a woman. Right? And you got to watch that because that's a trick of the enemy. And you will not find satisfaction in that relationship. Your relationship, I mean, your relationship with Christ is the only place you're going to find satisfaction. Now, let's just look at this. Brother Brandon brings it out in the, in the message, uh, I am the resurrection and life. I want to just read this. Glory to God. I, I, a couple things I, I just need to read. Y'all just bear with me here. It says this, now this afternoon, while we're here, Brother Baxter says, well now, Brother Brandon for missionary. Now, uh, I could, I, if I had the time, if I had, if I had to come time for, uh, for me to take up an offering for the Lord, I could do it. But I couldn't do it for myself. It says, but here not long ago, there was a great sum of money. Many of you heard about it, was given to me, and I, I refused to look at it. I, I want, we got to stop and process this. Great sum of money was given to the prophet, but he refused to look at it. Now, you know, we, you know, because we don't heard the blessing plan so much, all of us looking for the great sum of money. Now, look, I'm not, I'm not here to tell you that God can't bless you with the money. But I am here to tell you that the devil will also try to beat God to the blessing. And how can you tell when it's the devil? How y'all know when it's the devil? I can tell you real quick. You start missing church. Hello. Now, that's the devil. Right? As soon as that thing start, start getting in between you and church, you know they're saying, God? Well, but, 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 but Brother Jack, they say it. Oh, Lord. And, and, you know, and, 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 and please, don't, you know, when the devil offers some, oh, Lord, God, help me, Jesus. Don't use this thing. I mean, like, if, okay, this quote said uh, 1.5 million. That's what the quote going to say. I'm going to read the rest of it in a second. The quotes say 1.5 million. This is what was offered to the prophet. Now, if this was you and your business, and somebody was offering you 1.5 million, but they said, now you're going to have to do this, you're going to have to do that. And I, I'm not talking about, you know, there's some things that, you know, like, like I know, um, and, and I believe it's a blessing. The Johnsons are being blessed to travel, and you, you can't get to church when you're traveling like that, right? I understand that. I understand. But I'm saying if every time something come up, and you have to miss church in order to get it. And there's a, this is a 1.5 million deal. And you know, and you, and you want to make sure you tell the pastor, this is 1.5 million. <laughs> pastor. Pa pastor, I'm talking, I'm talking. <laughs> think about the church, pastor. <laughs> I am. Think about the tithes, pastor. Think about the tithes in the church, pastor. That's, that's what we want you to think about. I'm going to tell you something. If I sold my soul out for that type of stuff, Come on. Come on, then I wouldn't be thinking about your soul. Amen. And, and if God wants us to have it, he's not going to have us compromising to get it. Amen. Your satisfaction has got to be found in Christ. You know, I, I, this, this week I was reading the scripture, just bless my heart. I was looking at the Hebrew boys. And uh, them Hebrew boys, you'll notice there in, uh, in Daniel... Uh, they had to take a stand that they would not bow, right? They wouldn't bow. They wouldn't uh, bow to the image that, that the king had put there before them. And, um, and, 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 the, and the thing that I loved about it, as it comes to the end of, that, uh, uh, end of that chapter, it said after they went through the fire furnace, after God delivered them, after they took their stand, after all that, it said God promoted them. Yes, sir. I said, what? Most people... To get a promotion, they compromise. In order to get the money, they compromise. But God, God gave them a promotion after they stood. Yes, sir. Amen. If God gave them a promotion after they stood, what would God do for you after you stand? Amen. Be a Chick-fil-A. Let's go on and keep on reading. I just, just, uh, it's like a warning for everybody. I'm expecting blessings. 
I'm expecting that, but I'm expecting us to keep it balanced. That's what I'm expecting. Amen. Now, you ain't going to be not, not willfully missing church. Pastor, you know, I would come, but, you know, tonight or the, or the day, that this the only day they can do it. This the only day, is it? The only day? Is that one you want to be Chick-fil-A on? Okay, okay, I might as well say it since I'm here. You know, sometimes you're going to have to say no. You actually, God going to test you to see if you're going to say no. All right. And, and after you say no, and you're going to be like, oh, Lord, that was a big one, Lord. That was a big one. That was a big one, God. That was a big one. After you say no, you know what God going to do? And and if you if you if you don't have the wrong attitude, right. That's it. That's Amen. your satisfaction is in Christ. Amen. You find you'll find God say, okay, you said no for me there. I'm gonna bless you over here with one that's gonna be a, a much bigger, yeah. much greater, because you took a stand for me. Amen. That's gonna be the testimony, not the, uh, you know, well, uh, the money. No, no. See, it's women, money, and popularity. That's what the devil going to use. I'm saying these as a warning now. This is a warning sermon here tonight, today. Let me just keep going. Let me keep going. And we always apply it to just the ministry. I want to warn everybody. Watch this. Watch this, because the devil going to use it. I don't, give, I'm, I don't believe that we should be a poor church. Amen. I believe we should be wealthy. Amen. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. Right? I, I believe we should be wealthy. Don't, don't get me wrong in that. But at what cost? Okay, let me go on. I, I've, I've already prayed that God would enlarge y'all uh, coasts. I prayed the prayer of Jabez over every business in here. All right? But in enlarging your coast, I don't want you compromising with the devil. All right. Can I go a little further? All right, listen to this. He says, I couldn't do it for myself, but here not long ago, there was a great sum of money. Many of you heard about it was given to me, and I refused to look at it. I don't know if I would refuse to look at it, but <laughs> I'm just being honest. But thank God we had a prophet that taught us how to be Christians. I refuse to look at it. I could have made all of you happy. I could have, I could have made all of you happy. Just pick through. Now, among a million five hundred thousand dollars, see, and I even refuse to look at it. See, they packed an article of it in the paper that I didn't want it. It isn't money. A man that gets his mind on money, popularity, and things like that, he's surely on the outside. There's three things I've noticed in reading history that wrecks a minister's life from the start. One of them is money, the love of it. The next is popularity. See, now, that, notice I said that because uh, that's the Bible. It's, it's not, it's not, the money is the root of all evil. Stop quoting it like that. That ain't what the Bible say. Money is the root of all evil. No. The love of money is the root of all evil. Because the Bible also say money answereth all things. And you don't believe that? Ask FPL. Ask the city of West Palm. Ask your mortgage company. Your car payment. Money answereth all things. Money keep them off your back. So you need money. But the love of money is something different. Because the love of money causes you to compromise. And, 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 and as you compromise, you realize that, uh, I mean, you're chasing the wrong thing. Glory to God. The love of money, amen, is the root of all evil. All right, listen to what he says here. He says, uh, read the history of the Rex and Minister's life from the start. One of them is money, love of it. The next is popularity. When he thinks he's something, when he's nothing anyhow, and the next is women. That's right. Now, I just need to stop up some of these things. The next is popularity. The next is popularity. Do you know you can become popular? You realize that? I mean, look at this fellow. You, uh, you might have saw him, Brother Nehemiah. The man was just saving a baby's life. It was instinct. He just climbing to try to save a baby from falling. And, and, and one act of kindness caused this man to, 
just went, it went viral. Yeah. One act of kindness went viral and the man got his citizenship. Yeah. The man became a fireman. Yeah. Didn't even apply for the job. Yeah. All in all in one act of kindness. You can become popular like that. Now that man's life has changed. Yeah. If he don't handle it right, Oh, Lord, he's going to be trying to scale a lot more buildings. <laughs> Social media makes us popular. And so, so even when we're, when we're going on social media, what's the intent or the heart of your posts? What are you really trying to say? What are you trying to do? Is it to encourage? What are you really doing? What, what's the heart of it? Because God knows it. Right? God knows it. And, and, and oftentimes we do it because we want to become popular. We would love for something that we did to go viral. And everybody would talk about us. That would change your life. It will change your life. You know, why not? Oh, my God. Why, you know, oh, there, there, there's so many things that we could, we could say in there, but uh, watch that spirit. Not only does a minister have to watch it, but the church also has to watch it. Listen, I'm going on in this quote, and I, I, got, I got another thing to read here, and I'm going to try to get into something else. But, uh, but I, there's a, uh, th he says, um, this wrecks a minister's life from the start. One of them is money, love of it, the next is popularity. And when he thinks he's something, when he's nothing anyhow, and the next is women. That's right. Man takes money, women, popularity. That's been the three major things that God had trouble with his children. Many of the other things that goes along with it too. But the main thing is when God begins to bless a brother and give him something a little more than a something or another to help the people, then the man begins to think, see who I am? Right then he's on his road down. You want me, you want me to tell you how to get up? Get down. Oh, y'all didn't catch it. That went right, right, right over your head. You want to know how to get elevated? Get down. The way up is go down. Down on your knees. <laughs> right? Amen. He said the way up is go down. He that humbles himself, God will exalt. Is that right? He that exalts himself will be made a base. So church, you know, these, these scriptures, uh, scriptural principles are... Uh, still accurate. I want to read this other quote here because this is going to be something. I, I read this recently and it just blessed my heart. The Brother Branham just turned down $1.5 million. We just read that. Hey Amen. He, he, now, back in that time, you realize what $1.5 million was? Even a day. Do you realize what $1.5 million is? It's a blessing. It's a real blessing. But he turned it down. Right? He had something on the inside because his satis uh, on the inside of him, his satisfaction was not in the money. His satisfaction was in serving Christ. Amen. Now, here's another one that I, I, I caught something here. Let's just read this testimony. This is out of the message conferences. He said, the president of the Four Rose Whiskey was over to our place. And here's some time ago, and she brought her daughter. And um, she said, oh, the little girl wanted to be healed. And she said she had heard about it. And she's going to have an operation. And so she said, now notice she's the president of Four Rose Whiskey. Okay, bringing her daughter for healing. That, that lets you know even, even people with top positions own big companies, they still need God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So when you come in contact with them, mm -hmm. can I say it? When you come in contact with them, realize they're human beings that need God. Not just your services. They need the God that you have. Amen? God, I mean, see, see, Jesus had need to go by Samaria. Every time you get the call, it's somebody that needs what you got. And you got to realize what you got. Because Peter said, silver and gold, have I none. But such as I have, I give unto thee. Not just your services. That's right, brother. Amen. The God that's on the inside of you is what they need. Amen. Can I go further? Yes, sir. Listen. It says, uh, and, 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 and 
Lord, let me just leave it. Let me just leave it. Let me leave it. Let me leave, it. Let me leave that right there. There was a time in my life where uh, I looked in the mirror. I was forget what I was making at that time, but I looked in the mirror. And I said, "Man, I'm a fifty thousand dollar a year man. I deserve to make fifty thousand dollars a year." And I said it because I believed it. And I looked, I, I talked to myself in that mirror, and, and it took me about two or three years, and I moved to a job, and, and it was a lateral move to the job, but, you know, and I'm thinking I was getting a setback, but actually it was a setup for a blessing, right? And when I, when I got the job, I ended up getting about two or three promotions in a matter of two or three years, and every time I got a promotion, it was a 10% raise. And as I got the 10% raise, it took me over the, over the $50,000 mark. I said, man, I hit it. I didn't have my degree or nothing at that time, but I said I'm still worth fifty thousand dollars. And I, and when I hit it, when I hit the uh, hit the target, then I said, well, okay, now where do I go from here? I had no idea where to go. I didn't know what to do. I'm like, where do I go from here? I knew the only thing I could could do is just go up, just keep going up. And and the Lord blessed me, Amen. Where I I finally got to a job and I got so many promotions where I doubled my fifty thousand dollars. I did that. I was so grateful. But you know what I found? That still wasn't enough. <laughs> right? I, I couldn't find satisfaction in the career. Right? That that's what that's not that's not where my satisfaction was. My satisfaction was actually found in Christ. And I remember somebody told me, so now when you work for the Lord, you're gonna make a lot less. Okay, maybe so. But I still got satisfaction. And here's the other thing that I found. This is the other thing I found. It's not about how much I make. It's all my needs being met. Yeah, you know that that's different. When you got satisfaction guaranteed, I, I ain't thinking about how much money, right? Are all my needs being met? Can I pay my mortgage? Is my house, is my condo up? That's all I need, God. And if you just do that month to month, I'll be okay. Unless you want to pay it off in advance. But I'm going to tell you why he don't pay it off in advance sometime. Because the pressure make you pray. If you ain't have no pressure. Can I also say something? If you had a whole bunch of extra money. What would you do? If you had a whole bunch of extra money. Now, you know, the first thing we say, oh, I would do this for the church. You always try to put God at the <laughs> you, Everybody, Everybody always try to put God at the top of it. Oh, I, why don't you start doing that right now? That's why God see all through. You can't make no deal with God. Your satisfaction's got to be found in him. All right, let me go on a little further. I got to read this because this blessed me. So uh, here, this, this, uh, he said, she heard about it. She was going to have an operation. So he said, oh, she wanted to come over here. She didn't want to be operated on. Well, she run in while I was speaking. Want to be prayed for right then. So she's interrupting the service. Had to be right then. Well, now she couldn't stay. Her mother was after her. So mother comes in the back of the room, sat down with an arrogant look. So then we come up, prayed for the little girl and went back. Well, a couple of days after that, the doctor said, all right, it's a bunch of foolishness. Said, but she said, no, I feel fine. No appendicitis with me. I'm fine and dandy. So they went on four or five days. After a while, you see, at, just as I explained it, after about 72 hours, the symptom reoccurs again. If you really got healed, see healing, I'm not talking about miracles. So healing and miracles are different. Right. Said so, so healing. Say see. It, it, see after uh, if you really got healed, see healing. I'm not talking about miracles. And it uh, reoccurred. That's a powerful thing, right? Healing and miracles are different. Yeah. Miracles is when that thing just is vanished, just like that. But healing is a process of time. And the same God that does healing is the same God that does miracles. So sometimes some of us gonna go through a healing, and we gotta understand that healing takes time. Can I go a little further? Even if you have to go through emotional healing, yeah, it takes time. Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. It don't happen overnight. It takes time, and you have to give God his time. Yeah. 
Let, let's go on. It says after about 72 hours, the symptom reoccurs again. If you really got healed, healing, I'm, talk, I'm not talking about miracles. And it reoccurred because the appendix began to swell. And the doctor said, oh, Lord Jesus, if we can catch that spiritually. You know, if, 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 you, if you've been healed of an emotional scar, something that somebody said or something that somebody did, you know, you can get healed of that scar. But you know what? Somebody else can come along later on and do the same thing. And you know that touches that scar again. And you have to go through a healing process all over again. Oh, I hope you're catching that. <laughs> All right, I'm going on, I'm going on. He says it, re it reoccurred because the appendix began to swell, and the doctor said, now you see, now you better go get that holy, holy roller preacher again. So then he wouldn't, he wouldn't operate, but of course, when there was about $1,500 involved, he could do it. He said he wouldn't, but he did it, right? It happened to be a, fr a friend of mine on that staff that when they remove, open the girl up to take the appendix out, there was nothing wrong. See, they operated for nothing. They just left the appendix there because it wasn't even uh, affected in no way. And the doctor come, told me about it, a friend of mine on that staff that helped me op that helped operate. Uh, now, you see what it was? She was all excited and didn't know just how to hold on to that faith. See? And there we don't get a chance to explain that. Then that may, uh, my doctor friend told the mother, said the appendix is still there. They said she needed that appendix and it wasn't infected. It was nothing to it at all, just perfectly normal, pink, just old like it should be. Now this is the part I want you to catch. Remember this mama is, the, is like the leader of an organization, the Four Rose Whiskey. Now notice, and the mother became a believer. And then she says to me, what needs to be done is your ministry is not sit down in the corner with a bunch of just ordinary people. Oh, ain't you see? Don't you see the, how the devil sets you up? Hey, you don't need to be with a, just a bunch of ordinary people. It should be flashed across the country. Everywhere. Should be on billboards. Now, look at this statement. Now, that's just what the devil wants. That's right. See, but no, I don't, I don't want it like that. Now, remember, popularity is the thing that would get people. And what the devil actually wants us to do is to blast it. Oh, I hope we get it. Now, don't get me wrong. We have to advertise. But how are we advertising? Right? How are we doing it? Here, this lady say, you know, Brother Brandon, we want, and, and like Brother Brandon always talks, say, even when it comes to ministry for him, when he would advertise, he'd say, he'd say you see the, 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 the evangelist, a big picture of the evangelist, and you put, see a little note in the, in the small corner that say, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. What it does is that we put the attention on ourselves, and we've taken it off of Christ. How can we bless God in what we do? How can we, I mean, how can we actually give God more glory in what we do? That's a question for all of us. Right? How can we actually make sure God is on display and not just us? How can we ensure that, 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 that God is being elevated or lifted up and not just us? Praise the Lord. I mean, it, you know, I, I tell you what, uh, rather than me go viral, why not something I do for the Lord go viral? All right. All right. Now, I want to read this man. I want to, I want to go to Matthew 19. Okay, because this is, a, I told you, money is not the, the answer, amen, for satisfaction. Only Christ can provide you that, the answer for satisfaction. If you drink of this water, you'll never thirst again. That's, that's the water that Christ has to offer. Now, here in Matthew 19, there is a story here. Uh, and Brother Branham just kind of brought this out to us as we were listening to a, the sermon. Amen. Come follow me on Friday night. And I just want to kind of follow up with that here. Matthew 19. Let's read this about the rich young ruler. It says, uh, verse, uh, verse 16, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what, thing, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. But if thou wilt thou will enter into life, keep the commandments. Uh, now, now, Brother Branham made a statement about this man. He said, now, when he tells him there is none good but God, said this rich young ruler was actually identifying 
that Christ was God. He had a revelation that this, that you, Jesus, you are God. That's why I'm calling you good master. Right? So he goes on, verse 18, he says, he said to him, which Jesus said, now first he tells him, if you want to enter into life, um, uh, but if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He said unto him, which Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. All right, say so the young man said unto him, all these things have I kept from my youth up what lack I yet. Now here's the problem. Amen. Here's the problem. Because, uh, you know, let, let's go a little further. He says, Jesus said to him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou uh, hast and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come follow, come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Bear last saying to you, uh, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go throughout the, through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Now, I want you to catch something that the prophet tells us here about this young man. He was keeping all the commandments. He was doing everything that the word of God told him. Now, um, so at the time that he approached Jesus, he looks like, I mean, this is a, a real good Christian boy great boy. This is not some renegade. This is a nice boy. I mean, and, and, and oftentimes we don't realize it. We can start out real nice, but over time lose our focus like this young man lost his focus and we're not keeping the commandments no more. Oh, it happened in his life. Now, I'm, I'm telling you, because here's what happened. Notice the last verse and last statement in, in verse 19. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Jesus gives us the story of this, this rich young ruler. And what happened with him, and before he uh, left this life, he went through where he was blessed. He turned Christ down. He got blessed. His barns just expanded. He had to build new barns in, in order to store all the goods that he had. I mean, this man got blessed after he turned down Christ. Got blessed, right? But the problem was is that he died. And the Bible say in hell he lifted up his eyes. Now, 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 Brother Branham say when he got to hell, there was a, a conversation that he had with Abraham. And there was a chasm there or a great gulf that was in hell. And he began to talk with, uh, with, with Abraham and he saw Lazarus, a beggar that was at his gate, died around the same time he died. He saw the man in hell, but in Abraham's bosom, which we call also paradise. But this great chasm that he saw, he's talking, saying, let him go and just, just dip his fingers in water and just come and just, just touch him. He said, no, 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 we can't do that. We can't do that. You know, he said, uh, um, uh, he said, that's great gulf won't even allow us to cross over. They can sit and talk and everything else. He said, but, uh, he said, he said, what happened with this young man, the reason he ended up in that condition is yes, when he faced Jesus, he was keeping commandments. Yeah. But at the end of his life, before he died, he got away from the commandments. And the way you can see that he got away from the commandments is because Lazarus was laying at his gate full of sores. However, Jesus told him he was supposed to love his neighbor as himself. How did he get away from it? How did he get He was keeping it. He had a testimony. I was keeping it. But over time, he got away from it. I'm telling you. I'm telling you this right now. There's many people that get blessed. <laughs> And get away from it. Don't let your blessings take you away from what you used to do. No, don't, don't do that. No, no, you missed it. That wasn't God. If the blessings begin to move you away from what you used to do, something went wrong somewhere. The, the blessings should bring you closer to God. Not move you further away from God. I, 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 I mean, I, I, was, I was just sharing. I remember just being a, as a young man. We came out of high school. I'm not talking about one of us. Practically our, almost our whole youth group, half of us, graduated high school and was working at Pratt Whitney. We had good jobs. Out of high, no college, high school, high school working at Pratt Whitney. We saw, we, we saw the hand of God because we we, uh, we, we held on to the Lord, right? We, we were faithful when we was at, when we was at Publix. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. 
We paid tithes at Publix. And when we came out of high school, God blessed us with good jobs. And everybody that left Brad Whitney ended up with something better. Right? What I'm here to tell you is that if you keep God first, your satisfaction has got to be found in Christ. Nothing else. Don't let nothing else take your attention off of Christ. If it's going to hinder you from being faithful to God, it's not worth it. Can I, can I, I'm a, I'm, I want to make it plain. If your family is going to hinder you from, from keeping God first, you're going to have to make a decision. And then Jesus say, Who that, he that won't forsake father, mother, or, or this or that is not worthy to follow me. Church, don't let nothing come in between you and your God. Don't let your business come between you and your God. Don't let your career come between you and your God. Don't let your, don't let your education come between you and your God. Don't let nothing come between you and your God. Amen. We got to, you know, oh, glory to God. I just, I feel like it's necessary that we, we say these things. Like Jesus had need to go by Samaria. I had need to come and say these things. Amen. Let me, uh, let me, let me just read a couple statements that Brother Branham said about this, this young man. And, and, and come follow me. He made the statement. He says, it don't always have to be money, right, that pull you away from things. He said, it can be other things. See, anything that we hold dear, dearer than we do that call, see, it becomes like a money to us. Right. It not always has to be money. It can be other things. See, anything that we hold dearer than we do that call. See, it becomes like a money to us. It becomes something that corrupts us. Let me also. She said this says he didn't listen to the, to the to the voice of Christ. When this boy was given the opportunity to come follow Christ, he didn't listen to the voice of Christ. He said he went with his friends. I want to say I want to say something. It says, with you kids, you're all fine kids and you're, you're bound to have friends. But watch what kind of friends you have. If that friend is following Christ, go with that friend. Follow Christ too. Uh, but if, if it don't, don't do it. So there's a statement that I heard last Sunday. And I'm going to share this with the young people. Friends are like buttons in an elevator. They can either take you up. Or they can take you down. Watch your friends. The prophet goes on to say this. He says, there laid a man at the gate. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, I, that, that's, just not for, that's not just for, for, the, for the young people. You know what? That's for everybody. You got to watch who you let come up in your house. There are some saints that can take you up or take you down. So if you, if you find yourself surrounded by people that's taking you down, you got to get out of their presence. And then, and then this, is, this is all you got to do. You know, because you, you, know, you might not be strong enough to just kick them out. Get up out of my house. You ain't gonna, I know you ain't going to do it like that, right? So this is all you do. Excuse me. Go in your room and lock the door and, and, and that's it. And let them be, be out there talking to themselves. I'm just telling you, you want to keep yourself in this, I, I mean, you, you want to keep your experience, you're going to have to do some things different. Praise the Lord, especially, oh my. Some stuff we invite into our life and some stuff we need to just uninvite. Amen, church, right? But, but here, here the thing of it is, if you, when you got people, if, you, if you're not surrounded with people that can keep you strengthened and encouraged, you got to get rid of the, the, the dead weight. Amen. All right, all right. Friends are like buttons in the elevator. You push it to either go up or you push it to come down. Watch your friends. Watch those who you, who you associate with. Praise God anyhow. Amen. All right, let me go on a little further. He says, um, he says, it says there laid a man at the gate by the name of Lazarus begging him for food. And, and vainly, he would have eaten the crumbs that swept off, not even uh, to the beggar, but to the dogs, and was full of sores. But the man had been so polished in society. This is a statement that, that this, I'm actually in, in paragraph 77 on that. Yeah, that's good. The man had been so polished in society that he had no more feeling. Oh, God. The man had been so polished in society. That means 
he's thinking about what society thinks about. Right? You know, you, there, there are certain scriptures you won't post under your name. Under your identity. You got to come up with another identity to post scripture. But under your name, you ain't putting no scripture out there. No quotes. I'm not identified with the prophet. Do they really know who you are? Right? He said, but, but, but the man had been so polished in society, then he had no more feeling. Look at this. He become numb because he rejected that offer of Christ. Now, I'm praying, church, don't become numb. Don't become so polished by society and so worried about what the world thinks of you that you forget about what God thinks of you. Then look at this. This is another statement. I'm in, I don't even know where I'm at on this. Uh, I, I'm not, I, it's somewhere in between. Keep going down. Keep going. I, there's something else I want y'all to see. Yes, yes. Right here, right here, right here, right here. Now, he was in hell. He was in hell at this point in time, this rich young ruler. He said, you notice when he said, Father Abraham, now he still remembered. In hell, he remembered that Abraham was the father of the Jews. He said, Father Abraham, send that beggar Lazarus down here with a little water on his fingers to put on my lips. These flames are tormenting, he said. Listen. And Abraham said, it is, uh, it's, I can't do that in so many words. And besides all this, you see, you had your opportunity in life. When did he have it? When Jesus said, follow me. But he turned it down. He went the way that he could make money. Oh, my. And that's all right. Nothing wrong with making money. I love the prophet saying that. Ain't nothing wrong with making money. Nothing wrong with making money. But follow Jesus while you're doing it. Follow Jesus while you're making money. Right? He said, follow Jesus while you're doing it. And see, when he had went the other way with the crowd, you find out, he said, and Abraham said, besides all this, there's a gulf fixed between you and, 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 and he that no man has ever crossed over and never will. Them that are the, uh, them that are there cannot come here and these here cannot go there. It says, it's been fixed. No man has crossed or will cross. Now listen, look, look, look at this. Then listen at him. Listen. This is in hell. In hell. Listen at him. He wants to be an evangelist then. It mean, folk will turn down their God-given callings. All y'all got callings. Everybody in here got called to do something. And folk will give up their God-given callings to pursue money. And I want to tell you, the love of money is the root of all evil. When you're giving up your God-given calling, and I'm, like, I, like I said, all y'all got something. Even y'all sisters, y'all come in and say, your song brings a certain anointing into the sanctuary. Right? Your, your song does something for the people of God. And when you're going to give up your God-given calling, you might find yourself like this fellow here. Look at this. Uh, then it's, it's, he's in hell, and now he wants to be an evangelist. Too late, my brother. But so I'm going to tell you, that's what happened. When God put a calling on your life, I don't care what you do. That calling ain't going nowhere. Now you can use it for God or you can use it for the devil. Listen at him. He wants to be an evangelist then. The call that Jesus had given him to follow him had, and to be a soul winner, that was his calling. That was his real purpose. That's the reason God put him in contact with the people that he came in contact with, to be a soul winner. Listen, he says, as a young man return. Oh, my God. That, this just blessed me. To follow him had to be a soul winner, and as a young man returned to him again. Now, what does Brother Branham say? The calling that God, that Jesus gave him as a young man, and he forsook it, it came back to him in hell. Oh, Lord, Jesus, I wouldn't want that to happen to me. I ain't going to sing, nah. <laughs> What's the use in singing? Like, like, the, like, like David said, how can I sing in a strange land? I'm going to sing while I got opportunity to give glory to God here. I'm going to worship while I got an opportunity to give God worship here. 
My satisfaction is found in Christ, not in nothing else. Listen. He remembered it, that he had five brothers back on earth, and he didn't want them in that place. And he said, send Lazarus, then back to tell my brothers not to come this way. In other words, accept the call or follow me, see? But he said, if they won't do it, he said, yes, if one were raised from the dead like Lazarus and go back and tell us, you see, it shows that after we die, you're still conscious. He remembered. Abraham said, son, remember in your days? You see, he remembered. See, you still remember. You don't lose your memory. You remember. Oh, God, I, I, I tell you, I was blessed by a testimony that I heard recently. And I don't know if Brother Dig shared this last week. He was telling it to me. I want to tell you, your satisfaction is found in Christ. But he's telling me a testimony of a man, a, a, um, a very wealthy man from Russia. And he, uh, he was going to a, uh, they were going to little meetings and conventions and things of that nature. And uh, just business conventions. And uh, there was a wealthy man from Canada that would come to the meetings. And as they would come and they would meet at these meetings, this Russian man began to notice the man from Canada quite often. They would come to the meeting, and the, all these uh, billionaires would get together go out drinking. But this man from Canada would never go out with him, never drink, never do nothing. So uh, the man noticed it time and time again. So finally he, he stopped him one night. He said, hey, hey, how come you never go out with us? He said, I don't live that kind of life. That's not the life I live. That's not what I do. And he says, okay, all right, all right. So he says, uh, you know what? I got a little issue going on. Um, I'm kind of concerned about my, my son. And, uh, and, and I would like for my son to come and live with you for, for the summer, just for the summer. And he says, okay, yeah, he can come. He say, but now here's the only thing. Here's the, here's the only thing. If your son come live with me, he got to do everything I do. He say, okay. He say, now what I mean by that is I go to church and your son going to have to come to church with me for the summer. All right, no problem. It's just the summer. He can go to church with you. Well, you know, the, the man say, okay. So he took the, he took the man's uh, son in, brought him to his house, and took care of him and everything, took him to church. And before the summer was over, that boy became a Christian. And when he went back home to his mom and daddy, there were certain things that the mom and daddy wanted to do with the boy. He said, no, I don't do that no more. What do you mean? Well, I became a Christian, so I don't want to do that no more. And, and, and that boy's testimony actually caused his parents to change. And, 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 and see, look, 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 look. I'm talking about billionaires, right? I mean, they had the money, so, you know, it wasn't that they forsook Christ to get money. God already gave them the money, and now they could be a blessing to the church. And from my understanding, that same brother that God converted is the same brother that one day sold some property and blessed Brother G with a house in Zimbabwe. He made, uh, he, he, he sold some property and made, uh, 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 so much money on it. He said, I'm gonna pay tithes on this property that I sold. He said, the first preacher that come here to Russia, I'm gonna give him this tithe. And y'all, y'all heard the story about the little bag of candy that Brother G thought he had and he was carrying through the airports? Well, that little bag of candy happened to be $300,000 cash but the man never forsook his God to go get it but God is not you know God can give you the money but he wants to know that you're gonna that you're gonna keep him first your satisfaction is not in the career your satisfaction is not in a man the money that you make your satisfaction is not in, in in your family your satisfaction is in Christ that's everybody here put Christ first and, and, and I'm, I'm already warning y'all, some of y'all are going to have to say no. The prophet had to tear up the check. Actually, one of them he tore up. This one that I read today. <laughs> Certain contracts. I can't look at it. This, I can't look at it. I can't look at it. Put God first. Watch what God do for you. And so I'm, 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 that's, that's the blessing that I'm expecting. After people have put God first, watch the overflow then. 
everybody at their post of duty. Not, 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 uh, pastor. You, you pass it, you know, uh, uh, yeah, pass it, you know, uh, uh, you start talking fast and all kind of stuff, you know, and, 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 and uh, yeah. <laughs> Don't stutter. <laughs> Don't stutter. No, you, I mean, when you, when you ain't had nothing, you want to stutter. Don't stutter not. You was faithful when you ain't had nothing. You remain faithful. You remain faithful when you ain't got nothing. And when God bless you still, uh, you know, I'm still a, a man. A man. You know, I, I watch people, sometimes God give them a car. They was riding a bus, walking, all this other stuff, and then God give them a car. Can't find them in church. They they well, uh, me and my friends. What were you and your friends doing? I mean, what y'all doing on Sunday? We, uh, what, you What? Oh, amen. Even when you go on vacation, you got to be thinking about church. I go to certain places. I'm, I'm, what's the closest church here? I think, well, how can I get into service? How can I get in to a service? I ain't got to preach. I just want to go to church. Right? I mean, that, that, God has done too much for us to be kind of thinking like that. Right? Oh, I couldn't. Oh, I needed a. You need a break from church. Really? Really? Where your treasures are, your heart going to be also. This is just a warning message to the church. I'm expecting blessings, I but I'm expecting, I'm expecting people not to lose focus. In the midst of their blessings, Amen. Amen. That you know that that you don't you don't apply for that new job. That new job gonna have you out of missing service. You already know that ain't the one God bless you with. And that just that just that just I'm sorry. To me, I'm just saying to me. Y'all might think different, but to me, it's not a testimony. It's not a testimony when you gotta miss church. That's not a testimony. That is not. That didn't come from God. That came from the devil. And I know sometimes we hear somebody give a testimony like that. Oh, praise God! Not me. I ain't praising God for none of that. No, I, I sit right there. I ain't. I ain't praising God for that. That don't sound right. That don't sound like something my God to do. I know how the devil act, but that don't sound like no God to do. Amen. My satisfaction is found in Christ. He's the only thing that offers satisfaction guaranteed. Amen, church. Well, praise the Lord. I just want to, oh, I did have one more quote. Y'all just bear with me. I'm going to read this and I'm going to let this go. That man walked away from his, his uh, calling that day that he had the opportunity to follow Christ. Now, look at what Brother Branham says here in this message. Um, my last quote, I think it's out of uh, God commissioned to Moses. God commissioning Moses. He said this, I was reading of this and I happened to think about it. You should have power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you. That's what God commissioned his disciples. And then uh, when he commissioned Moses, he said, Why, what is in thy hand? Let's drop our thoughts back tonight to the God commissioning Moses, the prophet. He had done wrong. He got away from God. He had slain a man. He went back on the backside of the deserts and married a woman back there by the names of Pora, an Ethiopian. And he had two children born to him by her. And he was herding Jethro, his father-in-law's sheep, way back on the backside of the desert, running from God, just like a man running from his calling, taking up the material things. You know what? You ought to remind folk of their calling. Remind them of their calling. You're running from your calling, taking up material things. You know what? Can I? Let me. You know how people have been blessed. Underneath this inspiration of this word, they've written songs. They have, uh, God has anointed them. And some of the songs that have been written are songs that could have went top of the charts if it would have got out there. But they get away from this anointing and, and there's nothing that happens in their life. Nothing. You ought to remind people of their calling. The gift that God gave them. Amen. Let me go a little further. He says, there's probably a man sitting here tonight that if he just done what God told him. 
a long time ago, he'd be preaching the gospel somewhere. Do something. Don't just stand still. If you're not a preacher, testify. Do something somewhere. Don't stand still. If you're washing the dishes, why? Testify to the neighbor. Get out. Pass and pass tracks. Do something. Don't stand still. What's in your hand? Get doing something. And whatever's at your hand, use it. And I can see Moses as he was going along herding, herding some sheep one morning, probably thinking about the days. He was about 80 years, 80 years then. Some people say, well, I'm too old. Moses wasn't when he was 80, so he'd been 40 years. God child trained him back there on the backside of the desert, and they get getting him ready, preparing him for the service of the Lord. And then there was a burning bush, and Moses stepped up to the burning bush to look at it. I don't believe, I don't believe to criticize it. It was a lot of fire and burning, carrying on. He thought he'd just walk aside to see what, what, why it wasn't consumed. And while he was, while he was walking up close to it, the Lord said, take off your shoes. You're on holy ground. Here Moses, as Brother Branham was telling us, a man was a man running from his calling, taking up the material things. And I want to tell y'all, a man, don't be chasing material things. Make sure you keep your calling. And can I tell you something else? If you're going to give all, all of what you got to some of these things that God has given you, why can't we get all of that in church? Some of y'all got gifts y'all sitting on. Now, we give God our natural stuff. But I'm talking about your spiritual. Don't sit on your gift around here. Use what you got for the glory of God. Amen, church? We got to find a balance with everything we do. And, and I just, just got to say these things. I got I to lay this out. Because I don't want us to get it mixed up. Don't get it twisted. We don't we don't pray for people, amen, to for their coast to be enlarged, and I'm expecting God to do that. But I'm not expecting for you to lose your focus on God. No, 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 don't don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. That end of God. All right. Let's pray. And uh I do have uh after this uh, um, don't musicians y'all don't have to come up and we'll uh, stop the, the recordings after this after our prayer okay uh, father we just thank you uh, for uh, this uh, time lord just a little warning that you put in my spirit that we we just need to share and if it's only for one person then it's worth it but god i know that the enemy uh is certainly looking to do everything he can to disrupt the body of believers I know that he'll try whatever he can. And I know God, his job is to steal, kill, and destroy. Our job is to watch him, to warn the people, and just to make sure that we, we keep ourselves in check and in focus so that we don't miss what you're doing in this hour. Uh, it's a real devil that we're fighting. We can't put nothing before God. We can't put our jobs before God. We can't put our... Um, uh, careers before God. We can't put uh, our family before God. There is nothing that we can put before you, for you're the only one that provides true satisfaction. If we turn to anything else, like many have turned to drugs and drinking and alcohol, and this one girl on the, ra on, on the, on the airplane wanted to have a cigarette, but God, she couldn't find satisfaction in any of those things. Help us to realize Amen. True satisfaction comes in serving you to the fullest, not just part of ourselves, but let us give all of ourselves to your service. Help us, God, to surrender, amen, our talents, surrender our ideas, surrender our thoughts, surrender all of that to Christ. The Bible asks us a question, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and to lose his soul? So help us to keep these things balanced, God, is our prayer. In Jesus' name. We pray. Amen.